Honourable Member for Calgary Glenmore. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As a new member in uh, this House, it is an honour to rise this morning and address the Assembly in response to the speech from the throne from Her Honour, the Lieutenant Governor, that she so graciously delivered on May 22nd. I'd like to start off by expressing gratitude. Gratitude due to all of those who supported me in this endeavour and make it possible for me to rise in this House today. The hundreds of volunteers who worked tirelessly through thick and thin, extreme temperatures from those that resembled a pizza oven some days to bitter cold that would make a meat locker seem toasty, alongside me every step of the way, <clears throat> ensuring that every citizen heard the message of hope and renewal that our party would deliver. Gratitude for my friends who encouraged me that this was indeed a journey worth pursuing because public policy affects real people in real ways every day. Gratitude for my family who not only encouraged me but whose lives have instructed me on the value of hard work, risk taking and service to build a better community. Finally, gratitude to my colleagues and in particular the Premier for their dedication, passion and commitment to public service. As I trudged through the winter on the streets of Calgary Glenmore, leaving my footprints in the snow, I often thought of my great-grandmother and the footprints she left for me. I have a pair of her shoes that I display in my basement, a little pair of button-up boots. She, just, she raised eight boys, eight children, in large part as a single mom, after my great-grandfather passed from scarlet fever. She provided for them with the wages of a ranch hand. Mr. Speaker, she was, Madam Speaker, I'm sorry, she was courageous. Oh, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, she was courageous and she was tough. And so when the going got tough, she got going. And that is the essence of the Alberta spirit. It was not so different from my husband who arrived here in 1987 with a suitcase $3,000 in his pocket and the promise of a job. He too exemplified the Alberta spirit as he built a business and raised a family. And so I make footprints here in my role in this legislature. I will always be mindful of the Alberta spirit as I move forward because, Mr. Speaker, the Alberta spirit is something that we all share. Whether we are Indigenous to this land, came here generations ago, or are newly arrived, we all share that can-do attitude, a unique mixture of optimism mixed with a drop or two of straight-up stubbornness to succeed. Mr. Speaker, I would also like to take this time, this opportunity, to congratulate all members of this Assembly on achieving the opportunity to represent their constituencies. I would also like to congratulate you, Mr. Speaker, on your uh, election to your new role. Since this is my first opportunity to formally address this assembly, in the tradition of maiden speeches, I'm pleased to not only respond to the speech from the throne, but also to speak about my home constituency of Calgary Glenmore and the impact the citizens past and present have had on me and how they have inspired me to serve. Mr. Speaker, Her Honour spoke of renewal and the breathtaking vitality of nature in our great province. In Calgary Glenmore, we are home to the Glenmore Reservoir, its clear waters and the natural spaces along its banks, including the Weasel Head. And as we look west, we have an unparalleled view of the foothills and the Rockies. There are scarcely any more beautiful sights in the springtime than these. Also to our west are our great neighbours, the Sutina Nation, a nation of rich culture, a tradition and a proud history of community leadership, successful commerce and entrepreneurial spirit. In fact, Mr. Speaker, the Satuna hosted the 2019 Indigenous Resource Council Energy Summit. I look forward to building stronger relationships with the nation and all Indigenous people as we move forward with the Indigenous Opportunity Corporation. As her, her Honour mentioned in her speech, the Indigenous Opportunities Corporation will support First Nations and other Indigenous groups uh, financial participation in natural resource development and infrastructure projects here and in other parts of Canada. Mr. Speaker, I am committed to meet the moral obligation that we have to empower First Nations to be full partners in the development of the resources that lie below their lands. 
which their ancestors first inhabited, and to become full partners in prosperity. Mr. Speaker, you will also find on the banks of the Calgary Glenmore uh, Reservoir Heritage Park, Canada's largest living history museum. My neighbours and I regularly hear the whistle of the steam locomotive, and where else can you watch a stern wheeler uh, paddle through the waters in, uh, within the city limits of a modern city? We are so fortunate in Alberta to have cultural resources such as these that tell the story of not only who we were, but ultimately who we are and who we will become. And right next door to Heritage Park stands the Rocky View Hospital, one of our outstanding healthcare facilities, home to institutes such as the Southern Alberta Institute of Urology, funded by Brett Wilson and Doc Seaman, and one of the sites of the Libin Cardiovascular Institute of Alberta, among others, uh, showing how contributions from hard-working members of the private sector to our public health care system create leading-edge, world-class care. Mr. Speaker, Calgary is also home, Calgary Glimmer is also home to the incredible variety of excellent educational venues, including public, separate, private, and charter schools, such as Henry Wisewood High School, my alma mater, the Jewish Academy, Connect Charter School, the Southwest Science Alternative Program, and the South Gate Program, among others. I will tell you, Mr. Speaker, that I am pleased with our government's commitment to choice in education. But as blessed as we are with everything I've spoken of, the greatest inspiration in Calgary Glenmore is her people, Mr. Speaker. The wonderful people, young and old, past and present, those who have lived in the area for generations or who have come here recently from other parts of Canada and the world. I am grateful, Mr. Speaker, to have as my neighbours the architects and builders of our modern province, the community leaders, the professionals, the tradespeople, and the everyday heroes who exemplify the true Alberta spirit. As Albertans, both now and in the past, we are proud of the province that we have built. We built a land of opportunity where hard work and risk-taking is rewarded. And I am proud of all that our government is proposing to ensure that Alberta will once again become just that, a land of opportunity ensuring that our resources can get to market, creating the economic ecosystem that will attract the investment, the innovators, and the builders that will grow and diversify our economy. This is what the people of Calgary Glenmore have asked for day in and day out. They simply want the opportunity to work hard, succeed, and prosper. The people were very clear in April. The season of renewal is here, and it is now time to get down to work, Mr. Speaker, and I am grateful to have this opportunity to do just that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to address this assembly and the people of Alberta.